short and long to speaks. And in this BNF bite size style video, I'll be unearthing what can be re recommended to patients that present with a sore throat and what really shouldn't be recommended. You just need to look at all the medication available in a community pharmacy to see the abundance of cough and cold preparations available to buy. But are any of them actually worth recommending? And what age groups should not be recommended cough and cold products? Well, let's decipher this and more in this video. And I hope you find this video useful. And if you do, why not give it a like, share with your friendies and make sure to hit that subscribe button. So sore throats are usually self-limiting and are triggered by a viral infection. If they are a viral infection, then antibiotics won't necessarily be of benefit and symptoms can last for around a week. I can't imagine anyone watching this who has not experienced a sore throat before, but I mean, if you've somehow managed to go through life without a sore throat, then write in the comments below because I'd be intrigued to know. So when thinking about symptoms, it's easy to think of the symptoms that you've probably experienced when you've had a sore throat. So painful when swallowing, having a mild cough, the back of the throat may be quite red, the throat can be dry and the neck glands can be swollen. Symptoms are similar to in children and in adults, but children may also get a temperature as well. If a patient does have symptoms that warrants it being a more serious condition, then antibacterial therapy may be required. This could, for example, be signs of tonsillitis or laryngitis, if caused by a bacterial infection. In which case, a course of phenoxymethyl penicillin for five to 10 days would be prescribed, or if the patient was penicillin allergic, then clarithromycin may be a suitable alternative for a five day course. Situations that would warrant referral include a sore throat that does not improve after a week, if an individual is experiencing frequent bouts of a sore throat, or if the patient has any other conditions or comorbidities that can weaken their immune system, such as diabetes or chemotherapy. If it is an acute sore throat, then there's plenty of advice patients can be provided with. Simple measures such as gargling, warm, salty water. Note this wouldn't be recommended in children for fear of them swallowing the water. Eating cool foods or sucking on ice cubes, lollies or hard sweets may be of benefit. And drinking plenty of water and avoiding smoking um, if applicable. As well as this, resting can help too. With regards to smoking, if a patient is, is a smoker and is experiencing a sore throat, this could be an opportunity to make the patients aware of the smoking station service, if this is a service that your pharmacy provides, or if you're aware of a nearby clinic. A useful question to ask individuals is if they live with a smoker, rather than asking them directly, do they smoke, which can feel like quite an attacking question. So using motivational interviewing techniques, um, you can assess where on the cycle of change a smoker is and if they would be interested in giving up smoking. If a patient isn't interested in giving up, it's still beneficial to make them aware of the support and service that is available. In terms of over-the-counter remedies, so for pain, then paracetamol or ibuprofen may be suitable to recommend. And remember to ask your WAM questions when counselling a patient. So who is the medicine for? What are the symptoms? How long have the symptoms been present? Has any other medication been tried? And it's always good to ask about allergies too. This helps to structure the consultation. Medicated lozenges that contain a local anaesthetic um, or an NSAID could be of benefit. Um, and anaesthetic sprays are also available over the counter, but there's little evidence how beneficial these actually are. So let's focus more on the other over-the-counter rep products that are available in pharmacies. But before we do, if you're looking for questions on over-the-counter topics, as well as every chapter of the BNF, then make sure to check out Clinical Quizzical, a question bank which tells you instantly if you got a question right or wrong, and that gives you the flexibility to answer questions on any particular topic. Link is in the description box below. I'll also include a link in the description box of a demo video too. So go and check it out. Now going back to our over-the-counter preparations, I have a question for you. Would you recommend codeine phosphate for a cough, for example? It is available over the counter, but it does have concerns surrounding dependency. 
I remember a situation where a patient came in asking for codeine and upon going through the WAM questions with him, you could tell he was quite flustered as though no one had ever asked him these questions before. At one point he said the codeine was for his wife and um, later in the conversation he said it was for himself. Now I'm all for giving people the benefit of the doubt but you do have to use your professional judgment and in this case it was clear that he did not need the codeine for any cough. There are demulcent preparations that some patients feel help relieve a dry irritating cough. They usually contain syrup or glycerol. Simple linctus is an example of a demulcent preparation. Expectorants claim that they help to loosen phlegm or mucus and break up congestion, which results in clearing the airways from that phlegm or mucus. However, there is not enough evidence available. Guarfenison is an example of an expectorant. In terms of children, those under six years old should not be given over-the-counter cough and cold remedies that include certain ingredients. This includes, but is not limited to, preparations containing antihistamines such as chlorphenamine, cough suppressants such as dextromethorphan or falcadine, expectorants such as guarfenicin, and decongestants such as phenylephrine or pseudoephedrine. Compound preparations should not also not be provided to children under six. For children who are 6 to 12 years old, cough and cold remedies should only really be considered if the simple measures that were mentioned earlier in this video haven't been successful. Treatment should be limited to a maximum of 5 days. Another counselling point for parents or guardians is to ensure they don't give the child more than one cough or cold remedy because different products may contain um, the same ingredients that or ingredients that overlap with each other. In those under 12, codeine and dextromethorphan should be avoided. So I hope you found this video useful to support your understanding regarding sore throats and what advice would be suitable to those who ask for cough and cold remedies. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe and also visit my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter where I do post more pharmacy related content. Until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revisings!